Welcome everyone to Dana White Contender Series 2024 Week 1 Every Fight Breakdown. It's here. It's here. The best 10 weeks in all of MMA. Uh, Jim and I absolutely love Dana White Contender Series. We've never had a losing season on it, and we're here to break down all of the fights. Uh, we're going to let you know about some specials that we have, and we will be live every Tuesday night on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel, breaking down the fights. And trust me, you do not want to miss the live shows. I, I have said from the very beginning, the live Contender Series shows are my favorite MMA live shows we do. I like them better than the regular UFC pay-per-views, better than PFL. Contender mm -hmm. Series on Tuesday nights is where it's at. We award the BMF Award every night uh, based on the most impressive uh, performance. And then at the end of the season, we crown who our BMF is. Uh, it's a lot of laughs and a lot of profit. So let's jump right into it here. First fight we're going to talk about here. Anton Ho against Lanier Kavanaugh. I believe that's how I'm pronouncing those. Jim, what do you think about this fight? This is going to be a great fight. What a way to kick off the season with these two guys. I mean, these two guys are legitimate prospects. This is not a softball for either guy. It's going to be a great fight. Absolutely great fight. Uh, Kavanaugh seems to me to have a bit of an advantage I believe in the crispness of his striking. Um, I think he'll definitely be faster. You know, it, this is going to be such a razor close fight. I think this fight can go so many different ways. I don't really want to pick a side in this because you have two guys that are legitimate prospects. I mean, this could most certainly be an opener on a fight night card. Like the fact that we're getting this on contender uh, is pretty shocking. They're, they're, it's good exposure for these guys. They're going to get them both out of contender. Do not be surprised if both of these guys fight in the UFC card in the next six months. Like I think they're both making it there no matter who wins. Um, I'm going to lead Kavanaugh, and I'm going to lean him by decision. I think this fight goes the distance. They are so well-matched, and I think defensively they're both responsible enough. It's going to be high-paced. It's going to, They're going to be flying from the second that bell hits. Uh, so give me Kavanaugh by decision in this. I think he ekes out a close decision. And we see both of these guys maybe even get a contract. Who knows? We're in agreement here on this one. I actually like Kavanaugh just a little bit more uh, than you do. I think he's the most UFC ready of these two. I think you could put him in a UFC fight right now and he would be just fine. Um, my worry about uh, Ho is that he has good speed, but I think he leaves himself too open. Um, I think he lunges in on too many shots where, you know, he lunges in and he drops, drops the one hand and lunges in with the other and he just leaves himself open. And Kavanaugh is the, he is the caliber of fighter that will take advantage of that. So I think they both have some nice moves on the ground, but I don't think we see much of it. I think both these guys want this to stay on the feet. So um, if we see an exchange and one takes the other one down, it's going to be an entertaining match. Uh, on the ground, but I think we see it on the feet as well. And I'm with you that I think this goes the distance well. Both guys, good cardio, um, pretty good defense. They both seem tough. Uh, they can eat punches. Lean Kavanaugh by decision as well. I like. I think I like Kavanaugh just a little bit more um, th than you do. So, mm -hmm. next fight is Jose Delgado and Ernie uh, Juarez coming from uh, your eye favors. Uh, he won. Uh, that's where Peyton Talbot. Came from, what do you make of uh, Delgado and Juarez in this one? I uh, looked into this fight. This was an ad, so we had to go back and look into it. Uh, you know, there's if, you, if you're not abreast, there's been chaos <laughs> with Always. the Contender Series, especially Always in the chaos. first week. Um, I like Delgado in this spot. His size at this weight class is something. He's going to have the big-time height advantage. I think he's very well-rounded. Again, another legitimate prospect. This is not just a filler here. Great on the ground, good on the feet. The length is going to be a problem. And I know I know the other guy's coming from Uriah Favors, A1. A1 combat is starting to churn out some really good fighters. But I think this is a bit of a tough ask right now. Um, I just see more of the advantages on the Delgado side. I would not be shocked if he gets him out of here uh, looking to make a statement. I just think that the physicality edge is going to be on that side. And in these matchups, it's it's tight. And look, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I would rather bet on the guy who's 7-1 and one than the guy who's 8-0. Oh. I want the guy who's already tasted defeat and had to make adjustments. Because that tells me that possibly they can make in-fight adjustments. And if you can make in-fight adjustments, you can go very far in MMA. So give me yeah. Delgado in this spot. I, I like Delgado, too. There was a fight, a couple fights back, where he got rocked early. He got he got put down. Mm -hmm. And he scrambled and got the takedown. 
and held on, got his wits about him, and comes back and uh, gets the, the the finish. So um, in, in the third in the third round, yeah. so it gets rocked in the first, makes it all the way into the third, and then uh, gets the finish. I he strikes me as like the perfect contender series guy where we could probably bet him on a, on contender series and then fade the you know what out mm-hmm. of him in his UFC <laughs> debut. Um, he's wild, good, good power, not good power, great power. I'm not sold on Juarez. I don't think that I don't think this A1. I don't think your IF Faber's league's putting out all stars just yet. Uh, pretty weak competition when I went back and watched some of those fights. I'm not sure uh, Juarez is ready. I think Juarez really struggles when guys push forward and force the issue. And I think that's what Delgado does here. I got Delgado. I think the fight doesn't go the distance. I hope Delgado gets an amazing finish, and I hope they fast track him in the UFC. Because if he fights any kind of veteran, uh, Del- mm-hmm. Delgado's going to be in trouble in his UFC debut. Delgado's the the big favorite on the card, rightfully so. I think Juarez gets his first loss. So. Uh, guys, if you could, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We've got a bunch of videos up. NFL Futures. We've got our UFC breakdown videos. And we got a really, really big week of UFC and PFL. In fact, we uh, have some specials going on. We always like to show uh, full transparency, show our record. And it's just been a fantastic year. You see our record from last week. Uh, we do a recap video at the end of the week, show how we did. It just went great last week. So you can see we're plus 115.8 units for the year in all sports. And this week we're running some really good specials over at Wager Talk. Uh, buy two months, get one free if you're interested in a three month special. Or if you just want this week, we're doing buy seven days for the price of three. That is a smoking deal because we got Contender Series, we got PFL, and we got UFC 305. So uh, this kind of, this kind of fell on a perfect week uh, to lock in seven days for the price of three. Uh, it should be a really really good week in MMA. Six and one run plus 17 units last couple weeks in MMA. So uh, we're seeing that sport really really well. And we mentioned Takedown Live. That is on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel. Live every Tuesday. We'll start around 6:15. I believe that the Contender Series starts at seven. I'm telling you. It's a blast. It is, it, it is 10 weeks of so much fun every Tuesday. So look forward uh, to Tuesday night. So make sure you join uh, join us uh, for our, our live shows. So, All right, let's get back to Bruno Lopez, He's our guy. Back. Our guy, <laughs> Bruno Lopez, who stole our money. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he's getting another kind of short-noticed uh, replacement here. Mikhail Sazaniani, I think I butchered that name. Um, Better than I can do. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bruno Lopez. What do we do with this guy? Are we? Are, is he going to burn us again? Does he get the job done? Uh, I don't know if my heart can take another bet on uh, Bruno, <laughs> Bruno Lopez. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, just having to go back and think about our one glaring blemish from last season to start the year this year is just mean. Thanks, Dana. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, I do think that Bruno is going to win this fight. However, I need... I need him to show me, okay? I haven't put anything on this fight. I don't believe that his opponent has the same dangers that his last opponent did. Bruno got caught. He got caught fighting like an idiot, not pushing the wrestling, wanting to stand and trade, wanting to make a statement. And we've seen this in the past both ways. We've seen Kyle Barallo win a bad decision and come back and push for a finish. We've seen guys that pushed for a finish come back and win a dominant decision to get the contract. So you have to believe that in Bruno Lopez's mind and in his camp, they're saying, look, you don't have to push for the finish. It's great if you get it, but you got to dominate this guy. Okay? If you dominate this guy, you're getting a contract. And let's face it, he is. Uh, Dana was not bashful giving out contracts to everyone and their mother last season. Uh <laughs> We, I think we lost the under on contracts a lot of times. We would say, "Oh my!" Somebody oh, somebody over. showed a chart of like first season compared to now, and it's yeah. like triple the amount of what you used to be. Like really stingy with the contracts, and now care. it's like no, no. He wants these fighters in, you know, getting paid, you know, twelve thousand to show, twelve thousand to win, not you know the veteran who's got to make two hundred k every fight because it's in his contract. So he yep. wants these guys in there. Um, I think uh, we could see some wrestling out of Bruno. Uh, I think he's got the game for it. I think Bruno Lopez comes back and wins this fight. Um, Part of me has a little regret not playing it because I do believe the line is low. 
but there still is that chance that he gets sparked again. I mean, we're going to know really early if it's a good game plan or a bad game plan, and live lines will be open the first 30 seconds of this fight. If he looks like the same fool from last year, yeah, I'm selling. <laughs> I I got to be honest. I went and watched his last fight, in L- the, the one in LFA, where he wins by, you know, wins by, by, the, by the choke. I got to tell you, man, he is not putting a lot of faith in me to make me want to bet him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just not. Um, I can't. You he can't looks slow. Time. He mm-hmm. just looks slow. I will say when he gets on the ground, he's so much more comfortable. And it's like he moves faster on the ground than he does on the feet. I thought it's wasn't impressed with his striking at all. Uh, he's getting a really, really good opponent mm-hmm. uh, to work his wrestling and stuff. He's going to be bigger. Um, this guy's fought. Well, one of the things that cracks me up is how big the cages are that some of yes. these guys fight in. This guy, like as I've said, this guy's fighting in a parking lot. Like I mean, mm-hmm. it's like a fenced in like par- like construction Creepers. area. It's huge. <laughs> it's absolutely huge. He's not you're gonna be used to moving around uh this much. He's got some finishes. The guys he's fighting has not been too good. Uh as slow as Lopez is, I think Mikhail's even a little bit slower. And I don't think uh Mikhail has is gonna have anything for him when, once it gets to the ground. That being said, I'm not betting on Lopez. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I've learned my lesson on this guy, and we've seen guys lose in contender series, and then they go get another fight or two, and then they come back, and they seem to look better. i got to be honest. I just didn't think Lopez looked that much better in his LFA fight afterwards. So if you're, if you're looking from a, for an underdog, fading Bruno Lopez is not the worst thing in the world. I think he wins. It's probably on the ground, but I will be staying away. Uh, from this one happen. No no distance could be an interesting angle in this fight. I want to see what the line is when we get it on the domestics, but, you know, if Bruno's yeah. going to lose, he's probably going to get sparked. If he's going to win, it's probably going to be a submission against his opponent. I will you say, know, like... kind of the stars line up. Like, Lopez has lost to Brinson Ribeiro. Ribeiro does... He... he he's not a great fighter. Is one thing that he can do is hit like a truck. Yeah, and this guy. It. And Mikhail cannot hit like a truck. He cannot hit like Brenson Ribeiro. So Lopez's chin probably holds up, but I'm just not willing to pay uh, to find out. Ming Ding and Rami Hamid. Um, somebody was asking on our Saturday stream, has there ever been a leg kick uh, TKO? <laughs> and uh, Hamid has two of them in, uh, in his last couple fights. What are we doing with Ming Ding, who once fought, what, 13 times in 2000? 2000- <laughs> 2016. Might, was it even Look more? At this. It might have been even 2016. More. Yeah, a lot of fights. A mm-hmm. lot of fights in 2016. He's getting that work and getting that He's experience. trying to get employee of the year. Uh, yeah. He really wanted that award. Uh, what do you think about this fight? I was so ready to fade Ming Ding. So ready. Uh, it, this guy is getting a gift from the MMA gods that that fight got called off. He was going to lose. Uh, he was going to lose to Dolotov. Yeah, he was going to get murdered. Um Now he's getting a really, really good matchup. I am not going to buy into the fact that Hamid leg kick KO two guys who didn't want to be there. If you go back and watch both those fights, which we did, neither of these guys wants to be there after those leg kicks. And look, they're good leg kicks. Don't get me wrong. But they're not like the most devastating ones we've ever seen. Oh my God, this guy touches you once, you're going down. So my takeaway from this is the height and reach for Ming Ding. Look, these leg kicks come slow. I don't think they're lightning fast. I think he's going to be wide open for a counter right down the middle. And I can see Ming Ding ending up on top, coming down with ground and pound. This fight probably doesn't go the distance. It's a damn good bet uh, because one of these guys is going to go after it and and get the job done here. I doubt this goes to decision. Um, So, yeah, give me Ming Ding. On this one, I think he's parlayable. Um, be very interested in the finish prop when that comes out. Um, if you're watching this on uh, Monday night when we recorded this, if the props are not out for the distances, those don't normally come out till Tuesday and sometimes not till right before yeah. uh, the fight. So when you hear us talking about fights to go the distance and not go the distance, that's just kind of we're, we're getting ready for when these props come out. And so we have our fights circled that, well, we think this goes the distance if we get a good price. Maybe we'll take it. If it doesn't get a good uh, don't, good price, you know, we'll stay off of it. So we just want to be prepared for when those numbers come out. But mm-hmm. look for them Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon-ish. So uh, last fight, main event. Um, before that, just a reminder, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. 
NFL futures, MMA breakdowns, everything you need on this channel. Uh, hit the like button, leave us a comment, tell us who you like. And again, don't forget to join us uh, every Tuesday for Takedown Live, uh, probably my favorite live show that we do of all sports. So um, don't forget, we also got buy two months, get one free, and the buy seven days for the price of three. We are up a mere 115 units in all sports. The dream year continues here. All right, let's break down the uh, final five. One of the most courteous face-offs I have ever seen on Contender mm -hmm. Series. If you saw this, they were chumming it up and blah, 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 very matter-of-factly. Um, <laughs> I didn't like it. I thought Wes Schultz was way too cordial. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt, like, I, I need more aggressiveness here. Uh, Mansoor, <laughs> Abdul Malik, and Wes Schultz. This is an interesting one because uh, you got a guy who's 6-1. and one. Going up against 5-0, and oh, but the 5-0 and oh is big, big favorite. What do you think? Can Wes Schultz give him his one loss? I'm not thinking so. Wes Schultz is very happy to be here. Very happy to be here. That's probably and what I meant with cordial. It's yeah, just a you little. Know, you're, you're teeing me up there on that one. That's good. Um, also, we've seen this before where it's like, oh, we're nice at face-offs. And then that's the fight that ends in a minute. The guys that want to kill each other go the distance. <laughs> That's a great point. So, I mean, we've seen this before. Oh, I love you. I respect you. He's a great fighter. All of a sudden, there's a guy in a bloody mess on the bottom of the... I still respect you, even though you're concussed. Uh, I do not think that Wes Schultz is going to have the ability to stop the offense coming at him. I just don't believe in what I've seen from him. He's got that wrestling base, all right? But Dota's... So does uh, Abdul Malik. And the guy's touted. People have been talking about him. And that's one thing that we've seen with Contender. When people are talking about you and you get a spot on Contender Series in a main event, there's a reason. There is a reason you are being spoken about so highly. Um, I have a feeling that the, this spot has been known for a while in his camp that he was getting this shot. You know, we're, we're privileged to the information when they decide to tell us, but I would not be shocked if this was spoke about last year. Like, listen, mm -hmm. we're going to get you on the next season. Go get a win. Go get another win. All right? Do what you got to do. And you just look at the, the finishes for him. They're on the ground. It, it, they're just... The guy is a physical monster. I think physically he's going to be so much superior to Wes. So, yeah, I, I would not be shocked if there's a finish in this. And, uh, yeah, I'll take him to win. I'm not, I'm not buying Wes Schultz. You buying I Wes Schultz? Want, I still want to buy Wes Schultz. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's mostly because I have a couple questions about, uh, about Malik. Uh, what's his cardio going to look like in round two and three mm -hmm. if it gets there? We have no idea. We haven't seen it. Um, can, can you just forgive me if I'm not too impressed by beating a 1-0, and o, a 2-2, and two, a 2-5, and five, mm -hmm. a 0-0, zero and zero, a 0-1, zero and, one, and one amateur fight? I mean, add all these, add, add this up, like 140, 340, 4, 5, 9. What has this guy got, 13 minutes of cage time? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Wes Schultz, he lost to Dylan Budka. That's not a great look, but that's 15 minutes of, of cage time. Um, what if Wes Schultz could, what if, what, what if Wes Schultz weathers the early storm and Malik gasses? I will just tell you, I will, I'm going to have my live lines on. Um, this is by far my favorite fight to not go the distance. I think Malik gets him out of there early or he, we could, I think, I think there's a good chance. Jim, we've seen these first round oh, yeah. guys all of a sudden, oh, yeah. like they, they, they don't get the guy out and all of a sudden they're just dead to the world. And that's kind of the, the potential recipe I would see. I would I would I think I think there's no reason to bet Malik money line. You're taking him to no. win but inside the distance. He's he's not gonna grind out a decision, I wouldn't think. If anyone could grind out a decision, it might be Wes Schultz who might have the better cardio. I'm saying might because it's we just haven't seen it from Malik. So uh I, I I don't think all the favorites are gonna win. If I'm looking for a guy that I can poke some holes in. This guy's only f got five pro fights. None of them have gotten out of the first round, one amateur fight. And I know I, he's going to push forward. He's going to try and wrestle. And But Schultz kind of does the same thing. I think they have similar games. So um, I can't bring myself to bet on Schultz because of the he looked very, very happy to be mm -hmm. here. But I think this – we've seen some absolute just – 
parlay busters. Bruno oh, yeah. Lopez did it to, did it to us last year. So um, it, it's it's gonna happen. So I just I'm I'm approaching Malik with just a little bit of caution. If I'm betting him, I'm betting him inside the distance, and I'm gonna have those live lines open. And if if I see if I get the scent the scent a whiff of him starting to get tired and Wes Schultz isn't, then I'm jumping all over Wes Schultz on the live lines. And at that point, Schultz is going to be like plus 600, plus 700. So you're going to get some really nice betting opportunities. You're going to be so. checking the shine on Malik. See how uh, shiny he is after two minutes. Yep. <laughs> yep. I want the, Malik to win for the pure fact if he makes mincemeat out of Wes Schultz, like you're saying with that cardio, and they throw him <laughs> to a veteran. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. I can get behind that. I think if Wes Schultz wins, he's still going to be plus. Like, I don't see him doing much uh, for us bankroll-wise. Uh, no. Getting a contract or getting into the UFC or taking a short notice. Because if he does, the other guy's going to be minus 700. So what does that get us? You know, so, Nothing. Yeah, I like, I like the no-distance look for sure. All right. Uh, there you go, guys. There's your first week of uh, Data White Contender Series. Make sure you join us uh, on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube will be uh, YouTube channel. We'll be watching the fights live. It is just a, a ton, a ton of fun. Great chat um, and everything. So uh, good luck on your plays, and we will have PFL. We'll have UFC preview videos up, so make sure you uh, subscribe. Hit the bell. You get notified when all those videos come out. Good luck on your plays, and we'll see everyone tomorrow or Tuesday on uh, Takedown Live on Winning in the Shadows YouTube channels. Good luck. We'll see everyone then. See you then.